Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to another Iron Man episode and I'm going to finish up 98 crafting to start off the video on some uncut dragon stones. Only one more level to go until another 99 for the account, which is really nice. But before we start the video, I want to say I do have a Discord, as always, link to that is at the top of the description. And if you like the video, please leave a like, but you can do that at the end of the video if you want to know if it's actually good stuff. Actually, the perfect beginning to the video, Spider Minions is blocked right now, which means it is the easiest path on Araxor, and I still need that hilt, the uh, scythe one or the ranged one. Not really the ranged one that much, the web is kind of useless because I have ascensions, but the scythe would be perfect. I'm going to do it with magic, gives the highest chance of the melee one. And I also got the Virtus uh, helm and the bottoms recently, so that is some good upgrades. And I think it has Venom Blood, yes it does, so I don't have to bring an Anti-Venom or Anti-Poison. I mean, sorry. And uh, yeah, let's just get into some Araxor. How did I manage to get a personal best with magic when I have full Sirenic ranged with everything? I, I don't even know. But oh, five over overloads. That's actually so good. I was almost running out. Another spider leg. Okay, I don't need that. Uh, I don't think- I think I never will actually use this, except for maybe sending it over to my main or something for money, because I already have a full spider leg, and I'm probably not going to make the bow unless it, the meta changes and the dual ascensions aren't the best anymore, but I guess it's a cool drop. Compared to ranged, I take a lot more damage. The kills are probably around the same time, but uh, yeah, the amount of damage I take is pretty insane with magic, and I'm only up to like 120% enraged at this point. Look at that, I actually managed to die, and this is when the Ring of Death is so useful. 15% of the charge, so it's 84% now, and that costs me nothing. Only 15% charge, and getting Onyxus is very easy, but I think that means it's time to actually reset the enrage. A 120% enrage and I am taking so much damage while using magic with this gear and of course I am using the maniacal aura so my defense is reduced and that is a part of it. The difference between using the maniacal aura and the runic accuracy one is actually insane. Look at that, 6 minute kill almost and this is with 0% enrage. That's a lot of money. That is not a bad drop and uh, more overloads. Uh, that's almost a 7 million drop. That was not close at all, and I didn't screw up like a billion times. Uh, yeah, that's probably my last kill actually, to be honest with you, because... Uh, well, I'm taking quite a lot of damage in this gear, and when I am taking that much damage every single uh, time, and of course I did screw up a lot of the prayers and stuff, but still, I am taking so much damage at this point, and I think it's like 160% enrage. Magic seeds for the last drop. It is yet again that time now when I want to work towards that masterwork, 99 mining and 99 smithing. So I'm going to do some Animica mining. Let's see how far I'm going to get. I don't know how much I'm going to mine, but I guess you will see in the next clip. Maybe judging by the amount of daily challenges I have not done yet so far. I'm pretty deep into the mining grind. I'm actually getting pretty close to 96 mining already and I've mined 1.5k dark enemica and I am getting very close to being done with 1500 light enemica as well. But right after I get that I have some monthlies to do and also these daily challenges and then after that I can get runite which is going to get me even higher mining level and uh, the grind for masterwork is really really panning out. I'm actually starting to consider if I should put the experience in archaeology as I'm getting a bit higher level in the skill now and it is such a slow skill. So maybe I'm going to try just this once and see how much I get. 47,000 might actually be worth it. You guys can let me know in the comment section. And uh, by the way, before I go into the next clip, I completed all the challenges and the one I extended is the hunter one. So 228,000 experience and 70,000 hunter. Getting actually very close to that 78 archaeology now. Good old oyster, will you give me some fortunate components? Oh, I actually got one. Rune plate skirt, age 4. Very nice, but uh, I'm actually... Uh, I'm not going to get a farming level, but I am going to get a fishing level. 100,000, I think I get like 180,000 experience every single month. So I'm going to get 96 fishing in just a second here. 96 fishing? Actually it took quite a while, but 2.6 million mining experience is where I'm done. I ended at 96, and I have 1.6k Luminite, 1.5k Runite, and 1.5k each of Dark and Light Anemica. 
So we are going to get roughly 1.5k Elder Room bars, so quite a lot of smithing experience. Something I didn't know about that you guys let me know in the comment section is that the superheat form is changed from a while back I would assume since the smithing rework, because before when you mine something with a superheat form it turns it into bars, but now it is just making the smithing process faster. So when I smelt these bars it is going to be faster, as you can see while active logs are burned for experience, smelting is 0.6 seconds faster and smithing a low or medium super, uh, heat item acts as a medium or high heat item. So having this active meanwhile doing any type of smithing is very very useful. Just a very quick mention, I've had these 5 effigies in the bank for a very long time and they're all on the last step. And that means 97 in the skills are required, so I just not yet can complete these. And I think four of them have smithing and mining, and one of them is herb lore as a requirement, which is also getting pretty close to 97, pretty much halfway there in the level. So soon, when I get 97 mining, I will be able to actually open five effigies, as well as obviously 97 herb lore, but I'll get that very soon. And have the chance of getting the pet and also a lot of experience. You get an experience lamp that gives quite a lot of experience in a skill that you can choose. And uh, well, that's going to be a very nice thing to open for my account in the near future. Used all the Elder Room bars I had and I have 54 left but I can't even make a plus 5 chest with that because it takes 80 so I'll just save them for later. But as you can see in my inventory I made 4 entire Elder Room sets. And I've got 1.8 million smithing experience so far, and I'm 95 currently, and I will get like 800,000 experience from making all these into burial sets, which means I will be like 100,000 experience of 96 smithing, and I am 96 mining, so... Probably in the next video or the one after that, I will be at 99 in both of those skills. The only combat stats I don't have maxed is strength and attack, and I want to get those to uh, a bit higher levels at least before I get my master war gear that I'm working on. So I'm going to do some ED3 trash farms, and I'm going to make sure I have some charges in my gear as well. As you can see, I really need the master war gear because I'm working with the bandos and a tier 80 chest plate right now. And I have 1.8 million cash and that is really all the cash I have and that is also a big motivator to why I want to do some ED3 just to get some more money on the account. So this is what you can expect from one single ED3 trash run. I'm at the boss now and I'm going to go and reset but 124,000 strength experience. I actually hit 86 in this run and it is 300,000 experience per level so like three runs and I get an entire strength level, and they are very fast. And in terms of loot, from one run I got 321,000, and a lot of it, I mean, everything is in alkyballs, basically. Like, this you alk, this one you alk, I get pure money, this is also alkyballs. So, it is a very nice money, but I'm just going to keep it in the chest until I'm completely done and see how much we can make. Maybe this isn't actually true, but I feel like I get way more invention item experience when doing this. It might make sense because the experience that I get from strength is so high. But I feel like getting this to level 12 took basically no time at all. It was like level 8 or something, and it's already level 12 after less than an hour. So, we're going to probably get quite a decent amount of invention experience, and uh, we're going to get 94 invention start off everything and uh, as you can see I am 1.1 million strength experience in and also I put a counter here for dungeoneering so you actually get some dungeoneering experience when you kill the creatures in there which is really nice and also you get some rare creatures sometimes that you can kill that spawns randomly that gives 5,000 dungeoneering tokens and I started with zero and I have well I started with 958 and I've killed three so I have 15k now. So for those of you who are not really that sure on what the ED3 trash farming is, I'm currently killing one of the mini bosses and you get 5,000 tokens for that and look, 17,000 strength experience and also you can see I've gained 154,000 dungeoneering experience and these mobs are like really stacked up. So basically you just put a two-hander on, you can do it with magic, you can do it with ranged as well, but melee is what I want to train now. You just cleave everything down and look at the experience drops that I get. It is absolutely insane experience, like 6,000 for that one there, 3k for that. And these are not even the most insane experience drops you can get. You can get some, like I think 9k experience drop from some creatures. 11k for both of those together. These ones also give a good amount of experience. I think one run, depending on if I get a rare or not, or two rares sometimes when I'm really lucky, 
I can actually get like 200,000 strength experience in one single run. And I don't know if I can take up the map in combat, I don't think so. But you basically just run like up here where my mouse is, over here, down this way, this way up here, clear these trash down there and here you go a bit more forward and you're basically done. So it takes like 4 minutes, 5 minutes maybe for one run and you can get like 200,000 strength experience or maybe 150k on average per run. And actually this run that I'm on now is very lucky, I got 2 rares, so 10,000 Dungeoneering tokens. And I think on this one I'm hitting 91 attack strength, sorry as well. I got really confused because in the chat I saw this uh, Slayer pet drop. I was like, did I just get like the strength pet or something? Got kind of baited there, but uh, yeah, 91 strength and I've done quite a couple of runs. So we're going to have a look at the total loot that I got. How much alkyballs I got from doing all these runs. And by the way, if you didn't notice, I actually did hit 93 Dungeoneering as well during this grind. So when I'm going for 99 attack and strength here, it seems like I'm probably going to get like a bit less than 10% of the experience that I get in strength or attack. I'm going to get in Dungeoneering. So let's say like 10% because I started tracking this a bit late as well. So if I get like, how much is it? 6 million roughly attack experience and 6 million strength. It's actually more than that, it's 7 million, so 14 million in total. I'm going to get the 1.4 million Dungeoneering experience along the way. That's going to be some very nice bonus experience. So first off, I got 172 blue charms, which is not great, it's not bad, but it's just a bonus, I guess. It's nothing you should really farm for when you're doing this, but uh, it's a nice addition, I guess. So definitely worth to bring your charming imp if you want to do this. But now, let's have a look at all the loot that I collected from doing all these runs. We have gained 12 million, almost. Actually, 102 Dark Animica Stone Spirits. That's very nice, because I'm going to use that for the uh, 99 grind. But I got two rare relics, and they are 1 million in Alk, so they are very fast to Alk. I got 29 of the 25k, I think. So just quick maths, that's like 725k, I think. And then these, I'm probably never going to Alk, because they're only 5k each. So that's going to be... well, it's going to take a lot of time. But these ones are also high alkables, I think, 38,000. So I guess I got 1.6 million, I'm just going to take that in cash. And then these two are obviously very nice to alk, they're very easy to alk. And then the uh, uncommon ones I'm also going to alk. And all the huge spiked rune salvage. So overall, I think I earned way over or a decent amount over 10 mil in just alkables. Which is perfect. I mean, I'm going to make a lot of money just on my way to 99 in uh, the uh, attack and strength stats. Actually working on Reaper assignments and I get a Bandos task set on a general Gradler task. I actually have one Reaper point. You can see that in the chat right here. And I have to get 300 Reaper points before I get 100 inventions. So I will be able to make the essence of finality with the Hydrix I can buy. So I can actually get another Reaper assignment after this one today because I didn't pick up one today. So hopefully we can get a good task after this one as well. Finishing up the second Reaper assignment and I can actually almost right away get another one because in 7 minutes it is a reset. So I can actually do 3 Reaper assignments almost back to back which is very nice. Didn't really get that many Reaper points for that one, unfortunately King Black Dragon isn't the best one. But uh, in this time I guess I'll do the dailies meanwhile waiting 7 minutes. Got a new daily that was fishing on the reset and I got a Criara task that I will do in just a second. The only challenge I have extended is actually archaeology because, well, I don't have that much wiswax, so that's all I could extend. But let's see the experience, 280,000 and we got 60,000 archaeology experience. And I actually have to train some runecrafting very soon because uh, that skill is about to be my lowest skill and I don't want to get runecrafting experience in the tiers of gothics. So I'll have to take some time when I do uh, some runecrafting. A bit more Reaper points on the Kriara task, but uh, no drops other than that. It would have been nice to get some arm armadillo components for some weapon upgrades or weapon perks, but uh, nonetheless, Reaper points are great. As I said before, I do want to get into some runecrafting, and I'm farming some Abyssal Charms right now just to get some familiars that can hold pure sense. I can get a bit more experience while doing the Abyss runecrafting method. I'll show that in just a second if you're not aware of it. But I actually hit 12 on my Dragon Hunter Lance meanwhile doing this. 
So I'm going to get like 580,000 invention experience as well, which is halfway to 95. Now that I have everything, I have the follower with all the pure essence in, I have the power just filled and my inventory filled as well. I go to the blood altar with the demonic skull that gives a lot more experience and I craft and I get 2.7 thousand experience. And then all I do is teleport back to Edgeville and I should probably get some Wiswax for instant teleports, that should be very useful. And then I just get the pure essence out again and run all the way back. This is very interesting. I got a magical thread while doing this on the second run and 196k. So I thought this has to be useful for something. And if you have 30 of them, you can actually make a rune pouch. If you play old school runescape, you know what that is. It stores up to 16,000 runes. So you don't actually have to keep them in your bag. So if you have like three different runes, you can just put them into your bag and have them in one slot. So having 30 of these could be very useful and I would love to get all of them from this grind. So actually before I get into this, there is another thing I need to do, which is I need to buy, with the tokens I now have from doing some ED3 trash farming, I need to buy the Chaotic Gate Stone. Going to buy that, and I already have the Chaos Star, and if I add these together, it is going to give me an Abyssal Gate Stone. And if I add this to the, if I teleport to the archaeology area, I can actually make this a super strong relic to use. Because this is going to make it so I get instantly into the inner ring at the abyss. So I don't have to go through like squeeze through the um, pipes and mine the different things to get into it. Which is going to speed up the experience by quite a bit. And here we go. I don't know if I get some experience for this as well. I got some more magical thre thread by the way. But that is the Nexus mod. And I guess harness power. How do I actually use this? Slot 2. Confirm. And now I have the Nexus mod, so when entering the Abyss you will arrive at the center. I spent some extra time also to get this relic, which is the Pouch Protector. When using runecrafting pouches, they will never degrade, and for that I had to get a full collection log of the Samurak 1 items, which uh, you have to go to a certain area in the Taverly dungeon and hand them in. I actually handed in most of the items here, and then I realized the reward you get is only Chrono Notes, but then I had to complete this entire list again and hand it in to uh, the Taverly dungeon person. But if you're like me and you love AFKing, I'm actually going to make a test, even though I'm pretty sure rune span is worse at my level than running blood runes through the abyss. I got 186,000 runecrafting experience in roughly one and a half hour of doing the abyss runecrafting. But I'm going to do one and a half hour of rune span in the higher brackets. I have to go up here with the higher levels and see how much experience I get compared. And this is way more AFK. So if it's pretty close to this, I'm probably going to do rune span until at least 90 rune crafting because then you can do the soul altar, which is very AFK and nice, anyways. I set up a timer for one and a half hour and I got 111,000 rune crafting experience. So it is quite a bit worse experience, but. Compared to running the CMI, this is of course way more relaxing, you just click and basically AFK for a while. And I'm just standing on this small island here, sometimes I jump over to this one and click some of the uh, nebula shifters and all of that. But uh, the Blood S Wrath is decent experience, but then sometimes you get some skulls that spawn that give really good experience. So overall, like 111,000 experience, 110,000 experience an hour while AFKing is not too bad. And I'm probably going to mix it up, meanwhile doing some AFKing on this, then running some ZMI, and then when I'm bored, I'm just going to go here and AFK. Stayed a bit longer and hit 80 runecrafting, and 80 is a big milestone, because at 80 you can actually start making these skilling outfit, the rune ethereal outfit pieces, and I can already make one and a half basically, so I'll just make the first one. And these are very useful, meanwhile doing uh, the runecrafting spell because free travel into the rune span, 5% chance for double runes in the rune span, 25% chance to prevent essence powers degradation, but that doesn't really matter, ability to store 6 essences in the outfit. So meanwhile doing the ZMI, being able to store more runes in the outfit is even more experience an hour, so having the full set is definitely very good. But with that, I'm going to end the video here, I'm going to keep on doing some runecrafting, so in the beginning of the next video you will probably see some nice runecrafting progress. Hope you guys did enjoy the video, if you did, please leave a like, if you want to see more of my content, subscribe to the channel, and put on notifications when you want to see when I post the future content, or click any of the videos on the screen right now to see more content right away. 
Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Have a good one, guys. Take care.